All right, hi, welcome back, Tony Steve Vonder, and welcome to another exciting video. We are talking about Ketam. Ketam, this is a little known secret. Most lawyers have never even heard of this. This is one way you could get really rich by not even being a victim of anything, okay? You can become a millionaire off something like this if you have a good claim. What are we talking about here? Let's go to the litigation whiteboard and find out. Here we go. Attorney Steve's litigation whiteboard. Okay, so we are talking about Key Tom. This is part of the False Claims Act. Okay, this thing was passed 18 and the 1800s. What did I have here? 1863. Um, it's basically a law. In fact, I'll show you. Here's a whole book on it right here. This is an awesome book. If you ever want to specialize in a practice area, Here's the book right here, Key Tom, okay, False Claims Act, fraud against the government. Okay, what are we talking about? So, you know, our money goes into the treasury and things are paid out of the treasury and this, that, and the other. And you can't rip the government off, or you can, and I'm sure people do, and they have done it for hundreds of years. But there is a cause of action to go after these companies that are ripping off the government. And that's done under what we call the False Claims Act and these Key Tom cases, these Key Tom cases. Now, Let's talk, I know there's a lot of stuff on the board. It's pretty simple, basically. You have an employee, okay? Or it doesn't have to be an employee. It's somebody with knowledge that a company, where's our company here? Here's Fraudco right here. With a company, Fraudco, ripping off the government. Let's take an example. Uh, defense contracts are a big one. So you say, well, they, the government paid $100 million for these bolts for the airplane, and their job was to deliver these bolts. And instead of delivering the expensive ones, you delivered the lesser expensive ones to try to trick them and make more money. That's a fraud on the government, okay? And so ultimately, it's the taxpayers that get injured here. We end up paying for things that uh, we don't need and that were basically a product of fraud. So a relator, somebody with direct personal knowledge, firsthand knowledge, okay? Not something like, hey, like hearsay, like, well, I heard Dave tell me something was going on in their company. No, not that's not going to qualify. To be the relator, you have to have direct firsthand knowledge of the fraud and be, you know, be willing to testify to it. You will be protected as a whistleblower. You'll have whistleblower protections. You will have a cause of action if you if they try to retaliate against you. Say you're an employee of a gigantic um, defense contractor and they say, "What? How could you you've been here 20 years? How could you narc us out like that?" We're, you're gone. You're fired. Well, you have retaliation provisions where that would just create a whole nother lawsuit for this person. So if you're the original source of the information, what happens? The process is pretty simple. You file this lawsuit, not online. You don't go to PACER or you don't go to your uh, e, uh, EMCF, your filings, electronic filings, and just file it. You don't do that. No, it has to be under seal. It has to be to the clerk confidential everything you have literally just sealed okay nobody else is allowed to see it and then what happens is you send a copy over here your case your evidence your documents whatever you have to the department of justice the united states attorney general over here okay there's my department doj doj they have 60 days to to investigate and decide if they want to intervene and take primary responsibility for the case okay they say Ooh, this is a good one. We want to put our best attorneys on it and really maximize the recovery. So if they want to intervene, they can. Um, if they need more days and 60 to investigate, extensions are liberally granted. So the DOJ gets to decide, do we want to intervene? In which case, if the government intervenes, that's usually a good sign because the government's going to have a very high success rate. Can you imagine getting uh, sued by the government and their attorneys? You're probably not going to be in the best position. So the success rate is very high in these types of cases. Your payout as a relator, think about this. Say it's a $100 million fraud. Your payout is 15 to 25% plus your costs and attorney fees. 5%. Now think about that. That's a lot of money. If it's a $100 million fraud or multiple frauds, think about that. You would get 15 to 25% of it, all because you were the relator, the person with the original source, the direct knowledge, and they cannot retaliate. They can't just kick you out of your job and everything else. So if you're aware of any type of fraud, think about it, you know. There is also a provision for taxpayer fraud. And I looked into this a couple years ago, and I don't know if things have changed, but it used to be if you knew a taxpayer that had over $2 million or more 
in fraud, like basically defrauding the government of $2 million or more. That was also a claim. Um, but it's very simple. If they intervene, you got a good chance to get paid out. If they don't intervene, your chances of getting the payout probably go down quite a bit. But you are allowed to continue to pursue that case on behalf of the government. And what you do is this U.S. X relator U.S. That's how the, the lawsuit looks. And you just litigate it on out. And then you're entitled up to 30% of, of your recovery, whatever you get. Uh, but you, again, you're, you don't have any real damages except for maybe as a taxpayer. But you would be fighting the case on behalf of the government. Now, the d government can change its mind. They can go, wow, things are looking really good here. Uh, I need all you guys to send me copies of the transcripts. We want to keep an eye on this case because we may jump back in. If they have good cause to jump back in, like, hey, I didn't know about that. Geez, they didn't tell me that. This is really, is really juicy. They can intervene and with good cause get back in. So this is very important here. Your payouts, how it works. Uh, but yeah, you can recover uh, financial damages when you're technically not a victim of anything. And the, the, the uh, rewards can be substantial, substantial. Um, here's some of the type of, types of claims. It's really false claims against the government. False uh, defense contractors are a big one. You know, selling hammers for $50 or a $1,000 hammer when it's a, it's a $50 uh, piece of piece of junk hammer, fake medical claims, Medicare, Medicaid, things like that, false uh, taxpayer fraud, and there's a whole list of different types of things. But fraudulently obtaining money from the government, so you're really doing like the public a service. You're doing the treasury a service to expose this fraud, and you are again protected, which is nice. So they can't just uh, rip you everything. Burden of proof. You really have to show that this wrongdoer, the fraud co, you don't have to prove intentional fraud, but you do have to show that there was some sort of knowing actual uh, knowledge of the fraud or even better, a reckless indifference or a reckless disregard as to whether or not they were making fraudulent claims. OK, like I didn't pay the bills. Or, you know, I didn't send that. I was my secretary. OK, well, that's probably not going to work. OK, um, so that's your burden of proof. Again, no retaliation. So there you have it, folks. Um, that is Quitom, Quitom as we call it, um, in a nutshell. If you have claims, you need someone to talk to about it, you know where to find us. Give us a ring. You can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com. So, hey, tell your friends about this. You know, you know what's going on. It's just a matter of do you have the knowledge of it and are you prepared to file the case under seal and and see what happens. Okay, Attorney Steve, thanks for watching. I got to run. Bye now.